If, like me, you aren't Catholic, you may be equal parts intrigued and mystified by the wide variety of patron saints they have to choose from. Especially when you learn how weirdly specific a lot of these saints are. While sure, having a patron saint for travelers or doctors or something like that makes a lot of sense, a patron saint specifically for people that work at great heights is a little more interesting to me. The man that made me start looking into this topic was Saint Genesius, the patron saint of clowns. At first I was excited to read about the misadventures of a bubble-esque character running around 2nd century Rome, performing miracles with the comedic timing of a Charlie Chaplin routine. However, I quickly realized that I was in for a much bleaker story when I learned that he was also the saint of epilepsy and those who had been tortured. A bit less whimsical than I had hoped. Also, as it turns out, he's less the patron saint of clowns as much as he's the patron saint of actors and performers as a whole. Disappointing, I know. Anyway, St. Genesius was the leader of a theatrical group in Rome during the rule of Emperor Diocletian. He regularly put on productions that poked fun at the Catholic Church, which included the satire of a baptism. As part of this satire, Genesius recited the Act of Faith, which is this little prayer spoken at baptisms. But on this particular occasion, he was overcome by a powerful presence. He was enveloped by a pillar of light. He heard the singing of angels accompanied by the gentle strum of ethereal strings as he realized the full truth of the words he had spoken. Long and short of it, he underwent a conversion experience live on stage and refused to finish the play. This angered Diocletian, who somehow didn't notice all the ethereal light, and ordered for Genesius' execution. Now, some of you might be wondering where the whole epilepsy thing comes into the equation, and I certainly was as well. However, when I tried searching for more information about it, I quickly found that there were not one, not two, not five, but ten separate saints of epilepsy, one of which was Saint Valentine himself for some reason, and our good friend Genesius was unceremoniously pushed down to the bottom. And if you were hoping that at least Saint Valentine would have an actual reason for being one of the many, many saints of epilepsy, then I'm sorry to disappoint. Because apparently it's for no other reason than poor communication. As it turns out, the Germanic word for fallen and valentine are very similar, and since epilepsy was all the rage back in 3rd century Germany, the two words slowly became intertwined. The 3rd century Germans going so far as to refer to epilepsy as valentine's illness. It really makes you wonder how Valentine's Day became so popular when its namesake has such negative connotations. It'd be like finding out polio used to be called the Santa Claus curse or something like that. St. Valentine's tie to epilepsy is not the only time something like this has happened either. Take St. Christopher, for example. At first glance, he seems like a pretty normal guy. That is, until you realize the man's got a dog for a head. Sadly, in life, our friend Christopher was a normal human-headed man, but he was, however, a Canaanite, and somewhere in translation, this was rewritten as canine, which means dog, and the rest, as they say, is history. Moving on, let's talk about Edward the Confessor, patron saint of difficult marriages. Gotta say, I've got a pretty good feeling about this one. Edward was born to a woman named Ethelred the Unready, who, believe it or not, wasn't ready and died in 1013 as the Danes conquered England. After some years in exile, a prepubescent Edward would return to England, hoping to overthrow the king and place himself at the throne. Very ambitious for a kid his age, I must say, considering I could hardly walk in a straight line at the age of 10, let alone orchestrate a nationwide coup. I mean, he didn't succeed, but still, I respect the moxie. If you're wondering how old Ed earned his title, it's because he married a woman that he didn't love for political power. So yeah, yeah, I can, I can see how that may lead to a difficult living situation. But enough with all this dreariness, let's talk about something a little bit more upbeat. How about Genevieve, the patron saint of disasters? And also Paris. Genevieve was a 15-year-old nun living in Paris during the 6th century, and even though she was quite young, she had already lived through two sieges. Both times, she proved herself willing to risk her own life in order to find food and supplies for her neighbors. Years later, when word came that Attila the Hun was planning on invading and conquering Paris, everyone justifiably wanted to evacuate the city. However, Genevieve was able to convince them to stay home and pray, letting God defend them from the conqueror. While this may sound like an interesting approach, it proved effective, and Mr. the Hun changed course before reaching Paris. Now, at the time, everyone thought this was just your garden variety miracle. However, with the power of hindsight, I believe that Attila had simply learned that the Eiffel Tower wouldn't be built for another 1300 years, and decided there was no point in going to Paris anyway. Anyway, that's pretty much all I have on this subject, but if you know any more lesser known or weirdly specific saints, then let me know in the comments below, and who knows, maybe I'll make a part two. But regardless, until next time, don't die. See you later.